Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Art of Creation Homestead. Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there and anybody else who wants to thank their mother, whatever. Hey, we got a chicken mama inside the house there. Happy Mother's Day to that chicken mama. <laughs> but uh, it's windy. Sorry about that, but it's not going to stop being windy. So I'm going to do my best to get through this, all right? And, um, but we're in, so Sunday, obviously, we, we uh, talk about Jesus on Sunday. Talk about Jesus every day, but hey, Sunday we're, we're going to talk about the book of John right now. <laughs> the book of John chapter 4. We went through uh, the story of Jesus, Jesus' encounter with the woman at the well. This, uh, the Samaritan woman at the well. And um, so we went through that process. This is on the back end of that. When Jesus' disciples have shown back up. They were finally talking with, the, with this woman. They were surprised to find him talking with this woman. And scripture says that um, they say, hey, it's late. Go get some food. And he said, hey, I've got some food. Uh, I've got food you don't know about. And the disciples thought to themselves, hey, what happened? Did somebody bring in some food? So that's, 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 that's paraphrasing the, that section there. And Jesus said in verse uh, 34, John chapter 4, verse 34, Jesus said, my food, said Jesus, is, the, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say four months more and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. He said that with an exclamation point. Look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now the reaper draws his wages. Even now he harvests the crop for, for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps, is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Sowing and reaping in the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus is talking about. Jesus used these uh, farmer analogies so often. And I, and I appreciate that. Being somebody who grows food, I really appreciate that. And this is a big deal. Planting seeds, watering seeds, growing plants, producing fruit, reaping a harvest. All these things have very spiritual ideas in the middle. Or the spirit, spiritual ideas can be, can be uh, used with those, right? Okay, but what Jesus said at this point, he said, the, the saying is basically, paraphrasing this again, he was saying basically you guys are saying, well, four, four months in the harvest, because he's saying, using the farmer's name, the farmer's gonna say, we're looking at the fields, well, about four more months and we're gonna harvest this, okay? Whether it be wheat, barley, whatever, you know, whatever they're growing. And, he's, and Jesus says, but I'm telling you, it's time for another harvest, right? So he had to go and explain a little bit, but it's still a parable uh, to a sense that the disciples had trouble understanding, I, I would believe. But this is something we can apply to ourselves today. What Jesus is saying is, hey, look, he told his disciples, you're going to reap what you did not work for. And when, when he says, thus the saying, one sows and another reaps is true. Well, Paul talked about this himself. Paul talked about how, you know, Apollos may have planted the seed, I watered the seed, or I planted the seed, and Apollos watered the seed. Somebody else is going to reap from the harvest. You don't know who's planted seeds, okay, in, in life. You don't, when you go, when you, when you encounter somebody who may not know Jesus, somebody who may not be a believer, you don't know who's planted a seed there already. You don't know what may be going on inside their hearts and their minds already, their situation in life, what, what they've encountered, what they've experienced. You don't know. Somebody may have very well planned a seed in that soul already, and maybe you need to do something else to that seed. You know, maybe somebody else has tilled the ground. Maybe somebody else has planted a seed. Maybe somebody has been doing some watering already. And maybe they're on the brink of germination, right? <laughs> maybe that seed's almost ready to sprout, but you need to do something too. Maybe you've got a place in that line, or maybe you need to plant the seed so somebody else can water the seed, and somebody else can reap the harvest, right? I mean, there's... There's so many things that we don't know about. I mean, this is my garden right here. We got a solid tarp up here. We got raised beds up there. We got a mess down here right now, <laughs> right? I mean, there's some crimson clover right here that I, I planted intentionally for nitrogen fixer, but all this, all this other junk is mess, weeds. It looks like utter chaos. I'm gonna work on that this week, obviously, but like, I mean, it doesn't look like this ground is ready to produce a harvest. And so often in life, we can look at somebody and we can look at them and say, they're a mess. <laughs> they can't receive this gospel. They're an absolute mess. There's nothing there that, that tells me that they are ready to receive the gospel, that they are ready to turn their life to Jesus. 
we gotta they gotta clean some of this mess up first that garden doesn't look like it's ready for corn to be planted in it doesn't look like it's ready for beans to be planted in it doesn't look like it's ready for anything looks like it's ready to just be set on fire <laughs> right but yet with just a little bit of work that garden's ready to roll because i've done some work in there before i've done work in there before that ground's been tilled before it's been used before it's been it's had, it's had things added to it before it's not in the worst shape it looks like a mess because there's weeds in it but you got weeds in you too i got weeds in me too you know everybody's got a little bit of weeds going on in their life everybody has a little mess somewhere but yet we don't look at them and think hey well they ain't nothing we, we don't know we don't you don't know the situation somebody's in you don't know if there's already been a seed planted you don't know if the, something's already been worked in their life you just need to look there and say and just treat them the way jesus would want you to treat them you know, plant a seed, water the seed, do whatever. But if you're loving that person, no matter what their situation is, you're gonna be doing something for that, either planting a seed, watering the seed, doing something. Heck, you might be the step they're looking for. You, might, Your love and you showing Jesus to them might be the step that they need to make that seed germinate so they can accept the gospel. You do not know. But Jesus said, hey, look, those fields are ready right now. You can't see it. It doesn't look right. It doesn't, it may not look like what you thought it was gonna look like. This situation may not look like what you thought it was going to look, look like when the Messiah was here, but it's ready now. Not later, not next week, not next year, not four months down the road. It's ready now. And I'm, Jesus is saying that to us today. These fields are ready now. People are ready to accept the gospel now. People need the gospel now. More than ever, they need hope now. You think that people ain't looking for something to believe in? Some kind of hope, some kind of love that's real and sincere? somebody to just understand them and, and accept them as they are and let Jesus do that work of cleaning up? Because you can't clean it up. You ain't good enough to clean it up. I'm not good enough to clean it up. The fields are ready now. No matter what it looks like. No matter what it looks like, it's ready now for you to show them God's love. And that's all we gotta do. We present the gospel through some sincere words through some loving words, through some loving actions. We present that gospel there through some real grace, real mercy, real compassion, real hope. And Jesus takes care of the rest. Jesus takes, God takes care of the rest. He fixes it <laughs> and does with it what he will. And obviously it's up to the person to accept the gospel or not, it's their choice. It's their freedom. But we can't make that determination to say that field is not ready right now. That's not up to us. But he said it's always ready. <laughs> it's always there. So let's do this week. Let's treat people like they're ready to receive the gospel, like the fields are ready to harvest. And not like they can't handle the gospel at all, right? So thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate this. Please, prayer requests, comments, praise reports, leave them below. We'd love to hear from you. My name is Jason. It's Art of Christian Homestead. We love you guys. God bless you and goodbye.